Um, hello, and welcome to this, uh, I guess, video demonstration of, uh, I guess this is kind of the second version of the uh, Wiimote uh, scanner system, the uh, essentially that's able to track an infrared light. Uh, this is the second version of the system that uses the particle filter uh, technique for locating the uh, the infrared beacon in the frame of view of the Wemo. So let me just show you exactly what I've got set up here. I have got uh, one of these uh, Wemo sensors um, that uh, the sensor has been taken off the Wemo board and uh, put on a, uh, a custom board uh, made by Rocket Brand Studios. That board is housed inside this uh, 3D printed yellow enclosure that I've got here. And that entire 3D printed enclosure is put on top of a parallax standard servo. Currently what the system is doing is uh, the servo is scanning the sensor back and forth uh, looking for the infrared beacon. One of the things to notice about this is notice that we have to scan the servo over, you know, a, a somewhat wide area. It's about uh, between a 15 and 20 degree uh, uh, sweep. Uh, that the servo will scan and then stop. The particle filter is reset. Seven iterations of the particle filter are gone through. And then at the end of that uh, seven iterations, if the beacon has not been found, then uh, the servo continues to scan and look for the beacon. So anyway, this is our, this is our sensor. Uh, this is a uh, Java program. It's essentially a Java GUI that uh, shows us the output of the sensor and the output of the particle filter. In a second, the particle filter is actually going to scan past our light pole. Huh, there it goes. So uh, it just scanned past our, uh, our light pole that we had, so uh, you could actually see a little bit of uh, interference. And then over here, this is eventually going to become the beacon system for the robot, but right now, uh, what I'm actually using it to do is I'm using it to simulate uh, DC interference. And essentially this is going to uh, be much uh, greater power DC interference than the power which is going to be emitted from our actual beacon. This is between two and 300 LEDs uh, mounted on this light pole and currently I'm giving it almost 25 volts right now. And so anyway, I've got between, you know, 200 and 300 LEDs on this pole, uh, just running a DC, so that's my DC interference, kind of like our sunlight interference that we could encounter at, a, at the Luna Box competition. And our beacon is a single LED that is attached into, um, that is attached into this Arduino board. So anyway, uh, hopefully I'm going to show you that even though the power that is being emitted from the beacon is much less than the power uh, that is being emitted from the, uh, from the interference, from the uh, light pole interference. Even though uh, there's much less power from the beacon, the particle filter is still able to locate the beacon quite well. So anyway, let me go ahead and I'm going to grab the beacon. And the particle filter is still scanning back and forth. And uh, once it comes back around, I am kind of standing right back here. And hopefully, as you can see, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the, on the Java display. And I'll make another video that just shows the Java display and how this is located on the, on the uh, actual particle filter output. But the uh, particle filter has located the beacon and the servo has stopped scanning. Uh, one of the important distinctions between this system and the system that did not use the particle filter is that the, uh, the system that did not use the particle filter, uh, the uh, uh, sensor tended to move much more often. It would try to always keep the beacon centered. Uh, with the particle filter system, uh, the particle filter really does not work well when the sensor is moving. Uh, and essentially, our way that we are getting around that for this system is every single time the servo moves, we essentially reset the particle filter. So if I bring my beacon over to this side of the field of view, far enough. Over. There we go. So I brought my beacon over far enough that uh, the servo moved, and it moved enough that it recentered the beacon. So now I've recentered the beacon, and I don't know if you can see on the output screen, the, the Java GUI screen, but um, uh, the, 
DC interference is also in the frame of vision. So even though the DC air, uh, interference is in the frame of vision, and I'm even going to back up here so that I'm actually just as far away from the sensor as the DC interference. Even though I'm just as far away as the DC interference in this frame of vision, the uh, system uh, is still able to locate the beacon, even though the beacon is much less power than the DC interference. So now I'm actually going to move over to the right. And as you can see, the, uh, the sensor just, uh, just moved to scan with me as I move. So I'm going to move again. Okay. Good. There, so I moved again and it was still able to move with me. One of the problems with the beacon being so low power right now is that, um, you know, once we move over to the actual light pole beacon, uh, uh, we'll hopefully not have this problem, but with the beacon being so low power, it, it's very easy for it to lose the signal uh, when I'm standing farther away from the sensor. Hopefully we should be able to uh, uh, reduce or eliminate those concerns once we move over to using the actual light pole as our beacon. There. And as you can see, particle filter is able to track, uh, is able to track the motion uh, pretty well. So anyway, and as you can see, I am once again in kind of the frame of view. Here it's going to scan back again and then relocate. Hmm. Get burnt out the LED. There it goes. So I was able to scan back and relocate the LED. So pretty much any time the LED is not in view, so I've taken the LED, the beacon out of the field of view, and it's going to continue to scan, trying to find the beacon. Uh, so anyway, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, if that, uh, you know, that's just a bit of a demonstration of this scanner system. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and uh, please uh, email me or leave comments in the video if you have any comments or questions. Thanks for watching.